pressure at that pump. Got another rag. Thanks. I mean, I know what diesel tastes like. Keegan the vlog here welcome back to the channel and today we are going for round two with the Tatra we're on our way back over to George's now and we've got a few new things few new tricks up our sleeves I've got a big syringe that I use to fill the injection pump of this car when I changed it out so we're gonna fill up that diesel injection pump with a syringe and see if we can get it to fire on on diesel and not ether um, <laughs> this video is not gonna end until we can get that started so uh, stay tuned and uh, here we go on on round two of will the Tatra start yes it will it's just a diesel <laughs> this is not difficult okay here's the brain trust can 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 this group of people get 1940s technology to work if we can't then we should just hang it up 1940s <laughs> technology this is 1960s technology. it was built in 60 but that diesel that diesel tech is old yeah, that diesel engine goes back to the German mobile tank guns. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. This half -track, <laughs> it's a half-track diesel in yeah. here from from 1942. You know? Yep. Yeah. If we can't make this thing go, then I have no business working on a Ferrari. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Okay, behind the driver's seat, there is a hand priming pump, and I'm climbing up into the truck now to uh, theoretically fill the galley of the injection pump with diesel fuel. Still only getting it to fire on ether. Uh, we have come across the cold start assist mechanism is not properly connected to the pump, and uh, we're going to try to fix that before we go any further. Put a little bit of ether in that air thing. All right. So what we figured here is uh, this is the cold start assist lever, and the cable that's attached to it that goes up into the control in the cockpit is just sliding on on this screw that goes through here so what we're going to try now is Hans is going to hold it open uh, and that theoretically should increase the engine rpm by adding more fuel to it uh, tension nut in there is george Hold in up. the cockpit yeah kit you've got your hand on it can you pull it forward towards the front of the vehicle it, it, if i do and the, the cable comes out of the slot no you just did it and it, it pulled okay that pulled yeah that pulled it tight i don't know if it's tight can you can you reach down there and see if it goes further Push it further. It goes a little bit. A little bit further. Yeah. Hey, George, give it a 10 second burst with him holding that. Okay, so the next plan is uh, we are actually going to open a screw to access the uh, galley inside of the injection pump. Uh, one, we're going to be able to test for pressure up there. And two, if there is no pressure up there, we can manually fill that diesel injection pump. And uh, with the full injection pump, even if it's not being fed by the fuel tank, we should get it a, to start on diesel. And as it turns out, there was plenty of pressure feeding the pump. The galley was full, and it squirted right in my face. At this point, Pete asked a question about a big red lever on the far left side of the driver's seat cockpit area. And we traced the cable back to the rear of the engine and uh, this housing on the back of the injection pump. It's just too much of a coincidence that this is connected to the injection pump. So we dug a little deeper. Looks like it might be an old tack drive. Yeah. So uh, is the, the plug is back in, the pump is sealed up? Uh, well, 
as good as, as, good as it was before. Yeah. Hey, George, I, let's uh, let's I give it a shot. I was afraid to tighten it too much because yeah, it's, it's not a crush washer. Right. Yeah. Uh, Crank it up. Yeah. Everybody clear? Yeah. Full throttle. Sure. That's the procedure, right? Yeah. Where, where yeah. Full. Used to like to start. It was it was that shaft. He pushed that shaft in. It's a safe, it's a kill switch. It's a kill switch. So the red lever in the cockpit next to my left knee is connected to that fork that I'm pointing at through a cable and that spring in the picture to the left. What happens when you pull that lever is the fork pivots and pulls that shaft out. When you return the lever in the cockpit to its normal run position, that shaft does not automatically reseat itself. So it was Pete's fist just bopping it back into place, which lit off the diesel. I think you got yourself a new truck, buddy. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Good boy. Okay, let me put her back in. Come along. All right, well, there you have it. If you know what you're doing, yes, it will start. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, there is a mechanical disconnect at the back of that diesel injection pump and a big red handle in the cockpit. When that handle is pulled, the disconnect happens. Returning that handle to the non-pulled position does not reconnect the uh, mechanical drive to the fuel pump. Banging it with your fist does. So I uh, don't know if there's a missing spring somewhere, if it's supposed to work, but uh, either way, we got it running. So thanks for following along with that. It was a good time. Uh, next up on the channel is going to be the Ferrari timing belts. We are wrapping that up now. Actually, I'm on my way to the shop now. Hopefully going to be taking that out for a ride here on this beautiful afternoon. So uh, stay tuned for the timing belt job on the Ferrari and, uh, and then back to the TR3 frame after that. So thanks for watching. See you next time.